The island aquascape was going through a rough time. Following my experiment with the Denerle Dosator, things got really out of hand algae-wise, and since I had some pretty finicky plants in it that weren't, let's say, the most forgiving, many of them really actually suffered under so much algae. Plus, as I was saying in previous videos, I didn't really like the scape to begin with. I didn't have the proper wood for the scape. A unique opportunity has been presented to me. Acquiring a fish I've been wanting for, I think, about 15 years at this point. And it's this beauty over here. Problem was, the plants I had in the tank would certainly not survive the high temperatures this fish requires. Moreover, they were already stressed. I'm sure I would have just made a soup in the end in the tank. So I had two choices. Struggle to bring back my island to its original impeccable balance or redo everything, acquire the fish and call my dream a reality. I chose total renovation. Here we are in December, I already pulled out the wood, a few of the plants and decided, hey, let's film the renovation, why don't we? Next I proceed to a very thorough vacuum of the substrate. There was a lot of debris trapped under those carpeting plants and since I removed them, why not properly vacuum? Now with small tanks at some point you will run out of water but there's still waste. Case in which what we can do is fill the tank up with water once again and do another siphon. Pretty much, that would be a 200% water change, which is absolutely fine. As long as you don't have really outrageously sensitive fish, I think you should be fine, never had issues. Now I decided to reuse the pieces of wood, spoilers, they're not gonna remain here. The only reason why I wanted to reuse them is because one of them has two burrows that I thought my fish would absolutely love. Spoilers, he doesn't. I'll have to say I still don't love the shape of this wood, but I thought, well, the fish will like it. There was a bit of a trial and error with plants because, as I was saying, not all of them enjoy the high temperatures this fish enjoys, which are about 28-29 degrees. So I initially started with the plants that I thought would tolerate the temperature, but in the end some of them didn't do so well so I had to pull them out and replace them. But hey, never know until you try. I will have to say I never had such a hot tank before so I don't know which plants can handle it. Now sadly at some point my camera absolutely died and I had no charge batteries. So there is a gap in filming, excuse me. But here we go, this is a tank. A few days later after the planting I also added a black background which makes everything pop. But as you can see things are looking pretty nice. But who is this little fella in the bucket getting acclimated? It is the beautiful zebra pleco, one of the most beautiful fish on planet earth. After about an hour of acclimation I introduce him in the tank and slowly and surely he goes and explores his new environment. This is a baby pleco, it will grow a little larger but no more than 15 centimeters. Reason why I decided that I can keep him in my 20 gallon slash 82 liter tank. It's actually 21 gallon? I don't know, it's the blau one, it's not a typical size. Some plecos can grow enormous, this guy, no. He will stay small. From what I understand, they do grow very, very slow. So in a couple more years, who knows, maybe I'll have a bigger tank for him. Now, I call this fish him, but I don't know if it's a male or female. Reason why it's a him is because the word fish has a masculine gender in Romanian, which is a Latin language, and I do that a lot. It's weird for me to call things it, so sometimes I gender them. It has nothing to do with anything other than Latin grammar. By the way, you might have noticed Hellboy. He used to live in my Dutch aquascape. Well, I moved him here because he is a very curious fish and I knew he would really enjoy a scape with wood more than a Dutch tank. Also, he can tolerate the high temperatures the pleco requires. I currently keep this tank at 28 degrees Celsius by using a heater and everybody's happy. Also, Hellboy is a very good boy, <laughs> despite the name. I wouldn't necessarily say he's friendly, he doesn't seek out companions, he's up to his devices, but he's absolutely not aggressive at all. He has never flared at anybody else, never chased anybody, never nipped anybody. So I have full confidence in him, in being a good boy and continuing to steal the spotlight. I named my zebra pleco Max and initially he did actually enjoy the burrow or at least he found it. But soon enough he decided he really doesn't like it, he prefers to spend his time in between the plants or on the plant or on the gravel next to the wood. He finds all sorts of hiding places except those burrows and I hated those pieces of wood anyway. So one day they were out of the tank 
and replace them with some pieces of wood that were left over from a different scape. I placed a few dragon stones as well, they do not alter water parameters and look who's out checking out the new toys. He's a nocturnal fish but I notice he always comes out when I clean the tank and probably I disturb something in the soil and he finds interesting to munch on. He also gained more color, those stripes became more visible and he has a blue tint to him, do you see, on the fins. I'll put on the screen a few parameters that this guy needs. I cannot say much from my very own experience because I only have him for a month now but I'll make sure to do an update in the future when I learn more about him. All I can tell you now is that he seems to be a shy fish and comes out and about mostly at night and after I clean the tank. I was very worried for the first week or so because I did not see him eat and I tried to lure him out with all sorts of stuff. Frozen blood worms and brine shrimp, all sorts of carnivorous pellets, bought him bug buys, bought him the best things that people recommend and I placed food right under his nose and he just didn't eat or I didn't see him eat. So I was freaking out in the first week or two or so. But it has been a month, he obviously ate something. I also caught him nibbling on dying leaves and at night I do leave food for him in the back of the tank so he might eat it, he might not. And this is the tank today, this is January 17th and as you can see most of the plants have started to grow in really well. So the plants that I mainly have here are some Amazon swords in the back there and also some cryptocoins in the front. On the wood we can see some Anubias, I do intend to purchase more Anubias and these I would say are the staple plants for worm aquariums. Oh also the Bacopa there, it's not Caroliniana, I'm not entirely sure what it is. It's it's a no ID type of bacopa. So this tank is more or less a very classic planted tank. It doesn't fit into the nature aquarium, it's not an aquascape. I've also ditched the CO2. I don't have any more CO2 because these plants absolutely do not need it. And I'm not necessarily trying to recreate a painting or something of the sort. So I'll just start to call this one the classic planted tank. You can see Hellboy is doing great here. I just fed you. Are you already hungry or you just want to say hi? A few plants that I didn't think would do well but are actually doing well are the Pogostemon Helferi and also in the back, I might regret my choice but that's a Micranthemum Micranthemoides. It grows like a weed and it can actually suffocate other plants, it might take over this tank at some point. This script always gets uprooted by some coolie loaches, this is a new addition and until it puts out more roots, it's always uprooted, I always constantly need to shove it down in the soil. But other than that, I think everything is looking okay. There's also a lotus here, but I think it's going dormant, he suffered from some melt. Here's the little coolie loach. He's actually great friends with my zebra pleco. There are two coolie loaches here and I see all of them together just exploring the tank at night. The coolie loaches are not as shy as the zebra pleco, so hopefully in the future he's not gonna be shy anymore and I will be able to film him in the day. He likes to sit in between the those Amazon swords there, but I don't know where he is now. What is it, Hellboy? You wanna take the spotlight again? You always take the spotlight, you're a pretty boy. A few specs on my tank, I'm using Tropica Aqua Soil. I didn't change it ever since the beginning, ever since I set up the initial island. These rocks are dragon stones, they're inert. The wood, I'm not entirely sure, but it's a typical driftwood. The temperature in my tank sits at 28 degrees. It does tend to fluctuate a little bit when I do a water change, but that doesn't seem to bother anything. pH is around 7 because I'm using my tap water. And the Tropica soil is not all that powerful like ADA would be, but for this fish, a pH of 7 is absolutely fine. GH is a little high, it's around 9, but it's okay. And from time to time I do offer some botanicals to release some tannins, all the fish will enjoy that. And as for tank mates, I have some cardinal tetras and also some ember tetras in the back and a lost green neon rasbara. Here she is, I only have one. Temporarily there are some chili rasburas here until I find a different place for them and of course Hellboy, which is a good boy. I also have two coolie loaches and some autosynclus and some snails and a few shrimps and that is about it. 
I am well aware that the echinodorus in the back will grow very big, but that is absolutely fine. Again, I'm not looking to create an aquascape to give the impression that this tank is bigger than it actually is. I just want plants that can withstand 28, 29 degrees Celsius, and these are the only plants. If you remember, I planted some Ludwigia super red. That one did not do good at all, so I had to remove it. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments, did you ever have a zebra pleco? How did it do for you? I'm very excited to own one. I'm not interested in reproducing them, at least at the moment. I don't have space for it and I don't have really any desire to do so. So this scape is only for one zebra pleco, which thankfully will not grow bigger than 15 centimeters. But did you reproduce them? Do you have any success stories? Share them with us down below in the comments. And before I let you go, don't forget to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you all next time. Bye!